Hey everybody, it's Alex Miller at Captain Down here. In a minute, I'd like to talk about managing an organization. And one of my big theses I'm going to keep putting out there for you is that it's not just that AI is going to tactically change or replace or enhance this job and that job, and we sort of just plug in something new into all the slots we had before, but it's going to rather qualitatively change how you run an organization. And also, what sort of strategy you should use for organizing a large organization. My somewhat science fictional term I've been using for this, not invented by me, it's out there, is the rhizocorp. But to get started, I'm just going to talk about some observations I've had talking to a lot of everyday people about AI, and then explore in a, you know, just a fantasy of a data science or a software engineering organization at a big company. But what does this all mean? And what are some of the challenges you're going to have to solve on the way to being a Rhizocorp? So here's an observation. I think this is really fascinating. A whole lot of people out there were interested in computer programming and just hadn't had time, you know, just hadn't quite got there and being able to write code they thought was interesting in a consistent way. And things like ChatGPT, uh, or, you know, there's also much more specialized and powerful tools, but you really only need ChatGPT. It's gotten all these people over a hump of now they can write interesting code to do complex things. And I've talked to a lot of people that maybe you work in Excel a lot at your job and suddenly with these AI tools, even AI tools not intended for this purpose, you're on a new level using scripting languages and there's a lot of value there. It is not necessarily true that this new ability has anywhere to go at work for many of these people. So A, we all know, and I'll get to this in my, my fictitious organization example in a second, there's more to software engineering and data science than just being able to write code. You have to set up infrastructure and deploy things and understand business needs. So a lot of these people that are suddenly much better at coding, the institutional structures around them are not really set up to help them do a whole lot with that ability. There's another level on which, uh, so I always preach enhance, not replace. Even to the extent you, you suddenly have these new abilities and you, you figure out how to do a lot of optimate, optimization, is it true that you know, you're just an individual contributor and you're going to go to a manager on another arm of the company and say, hey, I figured out how to totally automate something that your organization is doing? There is a lot about office politics that I think makes this a little bit unrealistic. And certainly it's going to be slow and people are not, not going to be eager to have their sector of the tree pruned because somebody else showed up from another branch with a sudden ability to write Python and speed everything up. So this is all to say you've got a big flow chart implicitly of how your organization works, what feeds into what, what deliverable needs to go to whom, who decides what happens with a given employee's time and what the process should look like. AI is going to put a lot of pressure on this and there's going to be a lot of missed opportunity, one or the other or both. There's new productivity there that doesn't necessarily mean that it can be picked up and used in a significant way. It's going to be tough. So let's drill down on this idea a little bit more tangibly. I'm going to steal, you know, this is from the product management parlance, who I usually hear talking this word, blockers. Is it really true that if you're a software engineer or a data scientist, you just write code all day? The appearance of a new technology that makes you much, much more productive in writing code. Okay, well, I'm just going to write way more code, and then whatever we're going to try to achieve is going to happen way faster. It can't hurt. We've all had experiences where a lot of what drives the timeline is various blockers. And this is, in a way, it's the same story. 
as what I was just describing about people that are suddenly coming into these abilities to write code, use more scripting language in what they do. It's really the same story where the timeline is often driven by, okay, we wanted to put this on this server, but there's a delay getting the server. Or the, the permissions people for our public cloud environment are really busy and we don't have the right permissions, we need to wait on that. Or around data, there's often a lot of concerns about how sensitive is the data. Okay, so we can only put the data on server A, but then we can only put the software on server B. We need them to be on the same server, what happens? And then often the stakeholders that could help you resolve these problems, they don't answer directly to you, they don't answer to your boss. They're really busy and they have lots of other stuff to do. I would say, it's especially close to my heart and interesting data privacy and cybersecurity concerns. Being a little bit slow is even a feature and not a bug. So let me zoom out a bit. You got this big flow chart. Just imagine a generic flow chart in your head. There's all these flows of this deliverable goes to this person at this speed. Okay, AI makes one little section of this flow chart go a lot faster. What happens? You still have these blockers. If AI doesn't speed up these blockers, one thing that could happen is that maybe you don't need as many people to do whatever they were doing that was getting trapped behind that blocker. That would be a drag, I think, and a missed opportunity. And also just from an office politics perspective, not as fun. But then this is the interesting part and the practical part. It needs to be true that lots of these things about people touching base, is there an AI for those as well? And that's going to be a big part of who really has transformative success doing a lot more, more quickly, more cheaply versus people that, okay, we have this new tool and the software engineers love it and at times they get a lot done, but somehow it doesn't translate to actually getting projects out the door that make a difference for the business. I'd encourage you to think about the implicit or explicit flowchart of how the sausage is made in your organization. And what are the painful reforms you might have to make to let AI's enhanced productivity actually pass through to the punchline I think this is really important. If you do this right, your business could be in the position of you're just doing more and more. You're the image of growth. And if you do it wrong, and some people will, you're going to be herded by competitive pressures into a lane where your business is always asked to do what it's always done for less money. And that is not what you want and it won't be fun. These kinds of changes are not going to be easy, which is why I think they should really be something that a business leader is thinking about from day one versus, okay, we bought all these tools, but we're not really seeing the value. And we, we've all been down that road of we got all this new stuff. Life feels very the same. There's going to be more coming out from me on this topic. If you heard something you liked and you'd like to talk more, very interested in helping people with these issues and in general, just learning about you and what you're doing out there. LinkedIn has a schedule a meeting button now, which is one great way to get in touch with me. But one way or another, I'd love to hear from you.